The other thing was, of course, I think everybody got an email on it about running hand pieces in the Bravo when you open the office. Yeah, just that, yes, mm -hmm. that was on here, though. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure. Do you guys have any questions on that? She said she'll show everybody how to run it if you if you open. I'm gonna. Um, yeah, I need. Okay. So just make sure that you know that Jennifer, Jennifer, and Julian. And the cheat sheets on the wall. Okay. Well, I remember, Courtney, you and I have to get together because Black Talon, which is the new group, we got to get the HIPAA thing done. So there's an appointment that you need to make with the Black Talon guy to ask you a bunch of questions. I did say, listen, she's really good. She's really on top of it, and she's really done a lot of work. So can we do this without redoing everything? He said, yes, I review your documents to make sure your documents are okay, and if they're okay, that's it. One thing about the mirrors we could do is, um, Courtney, could you make the checkoff sheet uh -huh. whoever opens on Friday? Maybe if they charge in the morning and then pull it out lunchtime or something. Or why not just plug them in at the end of the day, Thursday, when they come in on Friday morning, just disconnect them. Either way. That's probably a better idea. Yeah, yeah either Fridays way. Fridays get crazy. They're shorter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, either way. I mean, whatever works for, you know. Just so we can make sure the hat says, just decide whatever is best on uh, Thursday evening. Uh, that way, we know Friday at least. It actually may even be like starting on Wednesday, Thursday, because Friday staff is not thinking about fog mirrors and they're, they're just not doing that stuff. Yeah. But your Thursday team is. Just so it's done. Anybody else? Last name links? Anybody? Um, wins. Oh, well, my, my father, this is kind of a funny story, but my father-in-law turned 85 yesterday and his life insurance policy expired and they called him and told him they could extend it another three years. <laughs> three? For how much? Yeah. For how much? I don't know. I don't know. But they only would do three years. Only oh, three years. <laughs> Can you cash it in? I don't know. I don't know. But it was pretty funny when he said, he goes, you know, the life insurance policy called. <laughs> Wish me happy birthday and you got your policy. That's still alive. You want to yeah. How much was it for me to extend my term policy? Like a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. You say a year? Yeah. It's term. It's term. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the advantage of a whole life is that it goes like this. The advantage of the term is if you buy it here, it'll stay here. Yeah. If you buy it here, it goes here. Yeah. So yeah. Well, he bought it down there. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. <clears throat> but that was pretty fun. Anybody else have any wins? Good stuff that happened? We yeah, didn't have a hurricane. That's right. We were prepared. I know, I'm still unpreparing. Man, that's the worst part is when we get everything out. Everything's <laughs> clean when you put it back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I see more stuff by the curbside. Yeah, I got rid of, got got rid of a uh, ton of stuff at the dump. Yeah. That was a busy day there. Yeah. I am. Um, Checked in on our surgery patient from yesterday morning, and he said that Dr. Kirkpatrick and were absolutely amazing. Ooh. So, and so yeah, any yeah. pain and so professional and just very impressed. Life and jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said this would have been unbearable had it not been the two of you working and just. Yeah, joking around and singing, you know, like we normally do. <laughs> like, well, that's, that's good, I guess. Well, I heard singing. Well, that might be good. Yeah. 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 True. 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 <laughs> uh, the Facebook posts have been nice. You guys notice those? They look very they're different, but they're like an app form. So it was, it was rolling our welcome to the practice video last week. I thought that was really cool. That you're showing out and kind of show the video. They're not, they're not general, they're very, very specific. They're, and they're, they're, they're like professional that. looking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's coming from Cheston. Cheston must have hired somebody else to work with them. And it's not on our page, so it's actually running as an app. So if you go back to our page, you can't find it again. It's only like if you share it, you can see it again or something. It's a so it shows up in your feed. It's pretty cool. That video has a lot of views, though. Yeah. I shared it. Really? How many? How many did you say? I think almost five thousand. Really? Good. Yeah. That's good. I don't know.
you live in the last piece of finish it. <laughs> but lose it, but that was pretty cool. Anybody else have wins? Alright. So our stats for okay, but not last week. Week <laughs> four. Can you see Daniel? Mm -hmm. yeah, good. So uh, we had our production was down a little bit. So you can hear it. So I can hear you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> production. <laughs> Space. <laughs> our referrals down a tad bit. I think it's coming from an implant where we're up really high. This is bad. The patient seen was down a bit. Did not affect our numbers, so. And then we have our collection that was way up. Good job. Which was a win. Good job, girls. Uh, so we had four new patients referred was 16. So we're down from our, what our normal has been around 21 to 26. We have been doing, you know, the 33. That was, a, that was one of our actually. So did really good. We had scheduled 19 new patients for the week and 31 FAs. Quite busy. Yeah. So with that, we are in. We're not counting last week, by the way. No, we're not. You didn't even count any of the figures from last week, right? No. Okay. I know. Yeah, because last week was a hurricane week. We were prepared for last week. Yeah. Couldn't work it. Yeah. So and uh, another win though. That was everybody who came in to help that day after. Thank you very much because Thank you. we got a lot done in four hours. Uh, we were able to reschedule and get the next day going, so thank you very much for that. Um, so with the numbers that we have, we are in a normal formula. Uh, on call is Ashley and Katie. Um, the first one in the normal formula is not to change anything that's working for us. Uh, so uh, first one is to continue to schedule every patient that calls, and that's for um, Brandy and Amberly. Uh, next one is to maximize our new patients scheduled, uh, which uh, Emily is still working on with Brandy, so we'll keep doing that, finding as much uh, slots in there as we can. Maximizing production for Dr. Matt and Dr. Furtado, that's for Emily to do that. Continue implant lectures. Our next one is September 16th, and Brandy will get with you guys on getting ready for that. Continue to get our magazines out, Eleanor. Continue to ask for our five-star reward booth. We got free last month uh, for all staff. By the way, the magazines came in just before the hurricane, right? Yeah, that's a win. Doctor to meet once a week to go over cases. Doctor Todd, Matt, Doctor Sheldon, continue to meet with your teams monthly. That's for Doctor Todd, Doctor Matt. Do you guys have uh, dates for those next ones? Not yet. I think Katie put it on the calendar for my us, but uh, I'll check. All right, and Eleanor to keep listening to recorded calls, which keep getting better and better calls. Uh, second one is ethics are very mild, justice factor is quite mild. There's no established action safety, particularly. So keep at the tone high, mild, all conversations <coughs> positive. Patients are watching and listening, so please always be mindful of that. Third one, the statistic betters, then look it over carefully, find out what better it is, and do that without doing what you're doing for. So Dr. Sheldon, to continue to place urgency on new treatment, that's for Dr. Sheldon to do, and FA to make sure he does it. Uh, prepare for upcoming uh, general dental uh, event, which has been rescheduled for November 7th, I think that's confirmed. Where is that going to be? The hotel can't help. Can't do November 7th, okay. Are we all going to that? We have people, and he volunteers for that, so we can go out there. First, maybe I should get a date, but now maybe <laughs> So we need to get that rescheduled as soon as possible. We do have dentists calling already, eager for the next date. So now it's you got to be after November 7th, correct? Yeah. Or, yeah, I gave, um, I gave um, Howard two days. We went back to October, late October, uh, or the 17th. Of uh, November? November? The 10th is a uh, 
Which month? No, so that's 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 on Thursday? <coughs> can we do it a day other than a Thursday, or everybody's no, set on doing a Thursday? I think we can. Uh, and I spoke to Howard yesterday, and he said Thursdays were fine. I, the, the dentist I spoke with said that Thursdays are better because they don't work on Fridays. Yeah. I think, I, I think we can make happen. Okay. Right. Good. Get that. All right, next one is our staff are going up. So far, our changes are working. Keep up with the work. And that's for every staff, front desk, and all staff. Continue to gain acceptance by educating and talking about the value of opiate treatment. That's for the doctors and, and the MA staff. Continue to submit weekly reports. Courtney, Katie, Anthony, and all of that bank. Doctors to continue to check hygiene every time you walk by. Uh, and remind you to remind them to do that. Dr. Pertrado, Dr. Matt, Dr. Sheldon. And last one is every time a statistic worsens slightly, please find out why and remedy is. So Dr. Sheldon doing all the doctor calls. Brandy's giving you those lists. Have new patient blocks in place for the rest of the year. So I need Brandy to do that. Now, have production blocks in place daily for openings that you can find doctors um, that doctors have. For the upcoming two weeks, so just as as, as we all know, it's a daily thing. And keep going into the next two weeks and making sure we have those slots. If we are coming up on the week of and doctors are free, then um, and we're going to put in new patient logs from that and Dr. Kyle make sure they have something to do. Uh, next is let the staff know daily if there's any um, hygiene openings that need to be filled or production openings that need to be filled because if we know, we can help fill it, and that's for all staff to know that. If you move any patients, surgery, um, hygiene, post-ops, restorative, um, if you're answering the phone or you're working with your patient, if you move it to the side uh, or move it to a different day, please let the front desk know that you have moved that appointment either to the side, which you think they can see it, or to the next day where you think they can see a block, they can't. So if you move something, no problem, just give it up to Amberly uh, right away so that they can work on filling that. Awesome. Last week we had someone that moved the hygiene from Friday to the side. Girls didn't see it, and so we had to call the patient that they were safe. Uh, we are here at camp, so let's not do that. Uh, call, uh, call past new patients that did not schedule when we're doing our screening and doing our working on that. Arrive to work early enough to be prepared for your day. That's for all staff. And limit the chatter, help others stay focused so everyone can get their duties done with the least amount of forgets and cares. That's for all that. The Nenicity thing. Yep. We have a special guest today speaking. <laughs> Sheldon would like to speak to it. All right, so let's talk. Um, we have our guests, Leslie and Tammy, who everybody's met. I scared Leslie to death the first <laughs> moment she got here, saying, what the heck did I, I could get this any place. So, anybody know what happened? Oh, uh, you didn't know what happened? Uh, I, did. I had a patient who, uh, you know, Laura comes up and Laura uh, does the briefing. And um, when, I, when I see an eye roll, I say, gee, really, I can get past this. When I get 10 eye rolls, I know there's probably something going on. So I went down and this is a patient who um, obviously was more needful than um, we could provide for her. And so she went into, we went into the interview process, which uh, very quickly devolved into, my, uh, the hygienist caused this. Um, this crown is broken back here. Do you think I can go back to the dentist to get it replaced? Uh, isn't it his fault? Um, and a few other things. And so I dismissed the patient. Probably not as nicely as I should have. And so do not use my example of how to do it as the way it should be done. It was probably a matter of um, um, my lack of self-control. I did not yell scream, but I certainly my voice was a little bit more animated and so were my discussions. And that's how Leslie got introduced to this practice. Did you recover for the rest of the day, by the way? It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it does uh, um, point out that we are not the practice for everyone. Um, anyway, this the, 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 the patient I'm sure will get be able to find somebody else to complain about because if I had taken the case, 
if we had taken the case, Matthew would have killed me, and um, uh, we'd be the next people that uh, she would be complaining about. We're not that good. Um, there's a lot of officers that have tried to work through those problems and try to keep them, and you don't want that kind of issue. You're right. You're right. You don't need, you can't make them happy. Usually when you come to a doctor, just so you get a clue, um, when you come to a doctor, usually at the beginning, you're on your best behavior. The, like it, the first date. That was like a first date, exactly right. And so, um, and, and then things go bad from there. Um, and usually a patient will treat a staff member different from the way the patient treats me. So there'll be a lot of whining, complaining to the staff member, but when it gets to me, then they're trying to impress me or in, in whatever way. Uh, I don't think this woman was trying to impress me. No. So anyway, um, yes, you do not have to accept everybody. Uh, by the way, do we know which pens are working and which ones aren't? The ones in the package are working. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I believe. Wait a minute, that works. The ones that were not thrown are still working. <laughs> So perhaps I don't need to take them out of the package. I can just use these. Yes, let's see how it all right, is. All right. <laughs> so today's talk is I'm written communication. A talk that is near and dear to my heart. And if you weren't here for the early staff meeting, you may be hearing some of that same stuff again. But um, but uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more general. What's the reason we use written communication? Anybody? So there's no confusion. So there's no confusion. There you go. Any other reasons? Okay, no mistakes. What else? Paper trail. Not forgotten. Paper trail. Not forgotten. Not forgotten. Efficiency. Efficiency. Okay. It allows the person to address it when it's convenient and good for them. Jennifer, why don't you give this lecture? That's exactly why. Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to say. Fantastic. All right. Searching for something else. And there's no denying it. There's no denying it, yeah. Because it's written. You see, it's written down there. Um, everybody's played telephone at one time, right? You know, you start something, you whisper to her, whisper to her, whisper to her, whisper to her, whisper to him, and by the time it gets to Amanda, whatever Laura started, Amanda has a totally different, different sentence, whatever that sentence was, right? Um, that's what happens in verbal communication. In uh, whatever is said is misinterpreted. Why would it be, or could be misinterpreted? Why would it be misinterpreted? Because when the person is originating the statement, it's hot. It's on her mind. It's got to be handled now. And you're going to, Amber, you're going to Ashley, and Ashley's thinking about which suture is he going to want to want to use, and you've got your request about whatever it is, what's Ashley thinking about? You or Dr. Furtado? And so whatever is coming out of you, as clear as it might be, is going to be muddled by the thought process that's going on in Ashley's mind. Or any, I'm not picking on you, and you Ashley, I'm picking on anybody. Okay, so we've got things that we're thinking about. And so if we've got high priority thinking, which we do in surgery, or when you're doing an FA, or even when you're answering the phone, we've got a high priority thinking, somebody going in and interrupting that train of thought essentially means this person has to put on the brakes, put that thought aside, and how easy is that? What, 3% of people in the world can be multitaskers? Okay, that means you have a 97% chance that this person cannot really park this. So the person is thinking about this and then thinking about what you're saying at the same time. Okay, thinking about this, thinking about what you're saying at the same time. How clear is this message gonna be to the recipient of that message? That's about it. It's where it's gonna be. Those of you who are married have experienced this in your marital lives. <laughs> Those of you who have kids experience it every moment you talk to a kid. And by the way, from the kid's standpoint, when the kid's talking to you too. The reason for written communication is very simply this. If we write something down on a piece of paper, Hey, let's see how this one goes. <laughs> oh, good. Now it's on the floor. Oh, my back. I can't get to it. Um, 
if we write something down on a piece of paper. And on the top it says, well, we got A and C, we got A R C. Yeah. A and P. Man, oh man, this gets confusing. Okay, yeah. so let's assume that it's going from A N P. From A N P to A R C. Okay. Did I? No, wait a minute. I did it the wrong way. Hang on. All right, wait a minute. All right, erase the tape here. All right, so it's going to A R C from A N P. And the date of this is what? Today is the 10th, right? So it's 9, 10, 1, 9. Huh? Oh, uh, 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 yeah, I guess, I guess technically that's and correct. The time underneath that. Um, it could be the time underneath that, yes. So what time is it? Okay, so you want me to move this over here, Joy? Sorry, All right, well, listen. You never get one to that way. I always split it up. I know that. I'm is on the right. All right. What it has to do with the zone. Why is this swinging back and forth? All right, nine, ten, one, nine, and it is what time? Seven oh nine. Seven oh nine. All right, and you can write it over here. It's okay with me. <laughs> okay, and then so you know it's going to A R C, and it's going from A N P. And what's something you might write to Amanda? You ever write to Amanda at all? <laughs> It, it would be a request. Yeah, follow up. Um, does this patient need a PM? Okay, so let's say, does this patient need a PM? Which means prophylaxis. Does patient, and we identify the name of the patient, need a PM, preventive maintenance? Love Ashley. <laughs> okay. Good. Oh, that's nice. So that's, that's great. Okay, so now Amanda is in the middle of doing root planing. She's down into a 15 millimeter pocket and she sees a calculus, piece of calculus at the end of the root. Therefore, if she re re received this communication verbally, would Amanda uh, greet you with a lot of uh, love and <laughs> affection and say, gee, I'm glad you asked me that question now. I already thought I was going to do an eye roll. <laughs> 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 you know, all over her glasses, like really, really. <laughs> uh, over the let me see. Let me do the. Let me yeah, see the pier. The there you go. That's good. That's good. All right. So, what do we do? This goes into ARC's communication box. Okay. So we got a bunch of communication slots over here, and so now Ashley files it into um, ARC's communication box, and it has ARC underneath it. Or it has Amanda's name underneath it. So now that piece of paper is there. Okay, so now Amanda has successfully, I'll make this piece of paper red, just so we can see the difference between the slot and the piece of paper. Okay, so now Amanda gets done with her 15 millimeter pocket, successfully heals the problem, removes all the calculus. Now Amanda can grab this out and she can look at this piece of paper. And now Amanda is ready to digest this communication and even answer this communication. And the answer would then be yes. Okay, person does need a PM. And she might even say yes, needs a PM in October. 2019. Okay, now what Amanda is going to do is to erase this or cross this out, put the arrow here because it's going to Amanda, and then puts this piece of paper in Amanda's slot. So, I mean, in, in Ashley's slot, so that which is A and P. So puts that in Ashley's slot. Now Ashley, when she's in the middle of surgery, doesn't have to receive the answer to the question, but she's done with surgery. She can receive this and take whatever action, enter into dentrix or whatever needs to be done. Make sense? Okay. By doing that, the person who's thinking about it can write everything down. And by the way, there should be enough data here 
Uh, you don't have to go overboard. There should be enough data there that this person, that um, Amanda doesn't have to ask a bunch of questions back and keep on going back and forth. But if Amanda can't answer the question, then Amanda writes at the bottom, uh, is the patient, mm, all, does the patient alternate cleanings with the other office? And then Ashley would say no. And it goes back and forth by piece of paper until, so this piece of paper gets longer and longer and longer, might even go onto the back. So we got question, 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 and then finally the answer is given, and then this piece of paper can be disposed of. It's the only way it works. And the bigger an office is, the more important this is. Because if we're not doing written communication, then there's a lot of interruptions going on. A lot of inaccuracies going on. And if there's a lot of inaccuracies going on, then patient care deteriorates. We had a little episode that occurred yesterday. And it had to do with a prescription medication. And so the prescription medication went like this. 20 years ago, I came up with a particular formula based on what I read. I found a pharmacy in California that does that particular formula of topical anesthetic. I call the pharmacy, they make the topical anesthetic, they give us the ingredients, Rebecca is ecstatic. Finally, we can rinse with something and the person is feeling or inject into the sulcus or whatever it is, and the person doesn't feel it. And this is the area before we were giving injections. So now I say, well, good. If somebody in California can make it, certainly somebody in Florida can make it. Let me go to X Pharmacy and ask the X Pharmacy to make the same thing. I go to X Pharmacy and it makes the same thing. Except we use it, Rebecca says, this isn't working as well as the California stuff is working. And so I say, all right, the heck with our local pharmacy. We're going back to the California pharmacy and we'll keep on ordering this stuff. We've been ordering this stuff for 20 years. The company goes out of business. The pharmacy in California goes out of business. So now um, we need to get it done locally. So we go to a local compounding pharmacy whose name will be anonymous. We go to the compounding pharmacy and we say, in written form, or is it written form or is it oral form? We don't know. My note? Yeah, no, when you're calling the pharmacy, what are you telling the pharmacy? Well, you, I asked, well, because my note was, was PR, PRG gel, so I asked them, PFG. 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 you make PFG gel? And they said, what the heck's PFG gel? <laughs> She put me on hold and, and had a look it up. And then she came back and said, oh, we make it like this. Okay, so I use chemicals one, two, three, and four, which is what we got from California. The local pharmacy says, no, nah, we got something that's better. We do one, two, three, and five. <laughs> so Amberly says, well, one, two, three, and five. I don't know the names of any of these things anyway. Um, but one, two, three, and five. Let's go to Dr. Furtado. Dr. Furtado, can we order one, two, three, and five? Dr. Furtado, who's in the middle of doing a treatment plan, or whatever, says, sure, we can order one, two, three, and five, not knowing the entire history of one, two, three, and four. Therefore, we then get one, two, three, and five. Now, one, two, three, and four was a liquid. One, two, three, and five is a gel. Also, one, two, three, and five it has a different chemical than one, two, three, and four. So it's not only a liquid and a gel, I mean, it, but, the, but the chemicals are different. So then Amanda comes to me, and Amanda says, blah, 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 blah. I said, sure, we can order a liquid one rather than, a, rather than a, a gel one. And then we find out that somebody has an old tube or two tubes of the old one, so we find out what the original chemical was, and then we go back and forth involving at least six staff members for at least a half an hour to get this all sorted out before I then call the pharmacy and then blah, blah, blah. Where if there is something that we're doing and it's written down, we could refer to that in the policy manual and know, know that no changes would occur. That's how important communication is. We wasted a half hour of time involving six or seven staff members, and those are the ones I know about because I know you were involved in that, Jessica, and I didn't even talk about you. So, um, <laughs> Because Jessica said, oh, good, I found this stuff in 2017. Is this the stuff you're looking for? Oh, okay. So that's, how, that, that's, that's what happens. Can you imagine what we all could have done with that half an hour? 
even go home early. All sorts of things we could have done. That's how important written communication is. If we're spending time verbalizing things or asking questions that could be written down, then essentially we're involved in a little bit of a policy violation. It's horrible, but it is a time waster. And it's so inaccurate when you ask a person a question and it's not written down that we never get, or we, we might get mis misinterpretations, might get things that are written wrong, might get uh, policies established based on poor information because the information or the original data was never there to begin with, you know, wasn't there correctly done to begin with, and it just gets a practice slog now. It just starts going slower and slower and slower. So, if you're asking a question of somebody, when would you ask a question of somebody? If it's needed for immediate patient care. Okay, I need a 12B blade. I don't think Dr. Furtado is going to take off his gloves. He's going to write a little thing to somebody, give it to somebody to get the 12B blade. He needs it. We've got a patient who's bleeding. Get that patient in. If we have a patient who has some kind of emergency, or God forbid we should have an emergency, that's the time for verbal communication. It's special. It's reserved. It's something that you, it's, it's like, it's, it's like that, 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 that fancy gown that you would only wear once a year. That's the way you treat verbal communication, okay? Not that I would wear once a year, you would wear once a year, okay? It would be something reserved for that. Other than that, it's written communication, which is gonna make your life easier, and it's gonna make all of our lives easier and a lot more accurate. Are there any questions to this, 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 this diatribe? Anybody? Well, another good thing that I like to do is instead of having to rewrite, oh. I'm doing microphone stuff. <laughs> instead of having to rewrite, like say I'm on the phone with a patient and they're asking me to ask you a bunch of questions, instead of putting it in the notes and writing it on a piece of paper, I put it, I print out the progress note and then do my little thing mm -hmm. and then draw an arrow. So, so that way it's information, the, right. So it's a single entry. Right. Instead of my putting my notes in and then rewriting it, it's just taking extra time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's why we do single entry systems rather than double entry systems, and we can apply that any place, including dentures, and then print it out. Good. Any other questions, comments? I also feel by writing it down, it gets out of my brain. <laughs> it gets out of my brain, and I can keep going on, not constantly thinking about this, because... Amberly is on the phone. I have a question for her. I, and I'm sitting there concentrating, and time is going by. If I just put a note in her box, I can go about my business knowing that, okay, she's going to get back to me. I can take it out of my brain. You ever notice that? It's true. Notice how when, when there's an unhandled communication, that it just keeps on churning there. You, know, you try to put it aside, but then it springs back. It's happened to you. It happens to me.